Hello, everybody. Welcome back to American Textbook Reading. I'm Brian Stewart. Let's continue learning about animals. In this lesson, lesson number three, we're talking about adaptations, adaptations for survival. You will discover adaptations of living things. Adaptations is kind of a long word, isn't it? It comes from a, a verb to adapt. To adapt. What does to adapt mean? To adapt means to change. Animals change. We change too. If our environment, if our surroundings change, we have to change with our environment. Think about this. If you move to a new country, you have to learn a new language. You have to learn a new culture. You have to adapt. You have to change to the new environment. So adaptations are changes that living things make when they change environment or when they want to survive in their environment because the environment is always changing. Let's take a look in this lesson how living things change according to their environment and that is adaptation. Let's take a look. Of course, adaptation I talked about, an adaptation is a body part or behavior that helps a living thing meet its needs. So we have a body part or a behavior that the animal will change as part of its body in order to uh, survive or to meet its needs. If we take a look at a giraffe, giraffes grew very long necks over a very long time, right? This is how their bodies have changed in order to meet their needs. Of course, animals need food. We talked about that before. So animals, to change to their environment, they will grow different body parts, very interesting body parts, in order to adapt or change to their environment. Trees that have very high branches, how can they get the food? They can grow a long neck, and that's what a giraffe did here. So that's an adaptation. <clears throat> Camouflage is another adaptation that animals will use. Look at this cute little uh, puppy. It's probably not a puppy that you want in your house. It's a baby wolf, right? You don't want wolves in your house, right? But it's a kind of cute when they're babies. Camouflage is a color or shape that helps an animal hide. You can see that this animal here has white fur. It's in the cold snow, so it blends in. It blends in to the background, right? It's hard to see. Let's take a look at a video. We have a video. Here's Mama Wolf, right? She's looking for her baby. He's on the other slide, okay? Let's take a look at the video. We can see that the very beautiful uh, wolf here, right? And this wolf lives way up north in the Arctic, and there's a lot of snow in the Arctic. Now, if this wolf was brown or gray or black, other animals would be able to see it very well. And here's Mama Wolf coming to say hello, right? So other animals could see it very well if they were different colors. But because they are white, because they have camouflage into the background, these wolves can come close to other animals that they eat more easily, right? They want to hide in the background. They don't want other animals to see them because the other animals will run away. They want to catch the other animals. So their body uh, fur is white to blend in to the surrounding snow. They're using camouflage to do that. And of course, you know, if you see wolves, some wolves will change the color of their fur. In the spring or summer, they'll be brown. And in the winter, their coat, their fur changes to white. So some animals will change, will adapt with the changing seasons. So that's very interesting. Now, another thing that we can talk about animals and adaptation, of course, all animals need food, right? There's two kinds of food sources, other animals or plants. Now, some animals have developed, they have changed their bodies so that they only eat other animals. We call those animals carnivores. A carnivore is an animal that only eats meat. So a carnivore only eats meat. A carnivore is at the top of the food chain. That's an interesting one. Food chain. What is a food chain? 
If you think about it, plants would be very at the bottom. Plants are at the bottom here. What eats plants? Well, deer can eat plants, right? Deer will eat plants. But what eats deer? Wolves will eat deers. Wolves. Okay? So this is a very simple food chain. What eats wolves? Nothing eats wolves, right? <laughs> Until they die, of course. But nobody, nothing hunts wolves. Th that would be very dangerous, right? Wolves hunt other animals. So this is a very simple food chain. The bottom of the food chain is plants. Deers eat plants. Wolves eat deer. Wolves are at the top of the food chain. Wolves eat other animals. They are carnivores. Just like a bear is a carnivore, it eats other animals. It's eating a fish here. What eats a bear? Nothing eats a bear, right? Uh, the bears just grow old and die. Uh, so bears are also at the top, at the top of the food chain. And that's what we mean when we talk about the food chain. You have the bottom and then you have the top. If something eats something else, it's not at the top. If nothing eats it, then it is at the top of the food chain. Okay. A uh, herbivore, an herbivore is another type of animal, right? This type of animal only eats plants. An herbivore is an animal that only eats plants, like this cute little rabbit here. And a rabbit is an herbivore. Now think about what I just told you about the food chain, right? We have plants at the bottom, then we have a rabbit that eats the plants. Does anything eat the rabbit? Yes, unfortunately, sorry, cute rabbit. Wolves will eat rabbits. Uh, eagles, big birds, will eat rabbits. Foxes will eat rabbits. So rabbits are not at the top of the food chain. They're in the middle of the food chain, right? They eat plants, but something will eat the rabbit. So rabbits are not at the top of the food chain. They're in the middle somewhere. Okay. Wild. Being wild means living or growing in natural conditions, right? So these are wild animals. When we think about wild animals, we're not talking about pets, right? Or animals that are in zoos. Pets are animals that we keep in our homes. They are not wild animals. Your dog is not wild. If you go to the zoo and see a bear in a cage, it's not in the wild, right? It's in a zoo. It's in captivity. But in the wild means living or growing in natural conditions. No man-made uh, surroundings, right? They're not living in homes. They're not living in zoos. They're not living in cages. They're out in nature. In natural conditions, they are out in nature. Out in nature. Okay? So that is the quality or the essence of being wild, wild animals. Okay. Spiny is an adjective that we can talk about animals. This is what animals, this is another type of adaptation, and this is a very cute little animal here, isn't it? This is a puffer fish. And if you go scuba diving, you can see them. They're very, they look really cute. They've got these really big eyes and a small mouth, right? They're very cute little guys. Usually they don't look like this. Usually they look like a fish. Uh, but they're kind of fat fish. But if they get scared, they blow up. And all these little spines that are normally flat on their bodies, they start to stick up. If you touch that, ow, right? It's like touching a bunch of pins and needles. And that is very important, spiny. So we can say it's spiny, it's, very, it's, it's hard to touch it, right? It's like you're touching pins and needles. Spiny means having sharp points like needles. So that's, also, that's obviously a very good adaptation for this fish. This fish will protect itself by that. Nobody wants to touch this fish because it could hurt, right? Let's take a look at a video of this fish here. Now this is a different type of fish. This is called a lionfish, and this is a very poisonous fish. You do not want to touch this fish. You see, it has many spines, just like the puffer fish. It has many spines sticking up from its body. It doesn't blow itself up. These spines are always there. If you accidentally touch this fish, you will get some poison in your skin, 
and it will it, it won't kill you but it will hurt a lot and it will really really ruin your vacation you do not want to get near these fish and these fish are very slow moving so you got to be careful of these fish okay now we have shape animals when they adapt to their wild surroundings they will have different shapes and we can see a lot of different shapes even if we just look at shells right some type of animals in the uh, in the ocean will use shells for their body to protect them and they have a lots of different shapes according to what their needs are shape is the outer form of something the outer form so we have a starship look a star fish we have a starfish that looks like a star shape we have a, a, a circular uh, cone or circular shells of course some hermit crabs will live in there of course snails will live in there first then a hermit crab will come by and take that as its home so we have lots of different shapes for different types of animals that live in the ocean but also all types of animals have different shapes okay when we talk about animals we can classify animals we can separate the animals into different groups by what do they eat so we can separate them we can put animals in one group or the other we can classify them one group is herbivores herbivores now that's a long word right maybe a little difficult to pronounce herbivores herbivores okay herbivores only eat plants so what do they eat herbivores only eat plants we can see the horse here the horse is eating plants now look at this picture wow he's got big flat teeth right so herbivores have flat teeth and this guy looks like he brushed his teeth right I'm just kidding horses don't brush their teeth right but this horse has naturally white teeth you can see that they're big and they are flat they're flat so that the animal can crush the plants and get the juices from the plants because you have to have strong teeth and flat teeth if you only eat plants you have to be able to crush those plants very well so what are types of herbivores horses as we can see here squirrels and rabbits etc those types of animals are herbivores they're not at the top of the food chain they're not at the bottom they're in the middle of the food chain let's take a look at a video of a horse wow of a horse and he's talking isn't he it looks like he's talking but you see the teeth there the teeth are flat oh yeah it was a good picture of here we can see the flat teeth there and uh, of course the horse needs to have strong uh, flat teeth in order to be able to eat plants now, it's very strange it looked like that horse was talking or angry at somebody okay let's move on now what is the other type of animal we've talked about herbivores the other type of animal of course is carnivore before I said herbivores are not at the top of the food chain they're in the middle what eats herbivores carnivores will eat herbivores because carnivores eat other animals they eat meat okay so as opposed to herbivores which have very flat teeth you can see wow look at this lion right he has very sharp teeth so these teeth are very sharp and you see they're matching on the top and the bottom they have a, a sharp tooth here and here and also on the bottom we call these teeth these sharp teeth especially these long sharp ones those are called fangs f-a-n-g-s so if an animal has fangs it has sharp pointy teeth that it uses to catch and to bite and to kill other animals so that it eats other animals that's what carnivores have what are types of carnivores lions tigers sharks etc of course these types of animals can be dangerous right let's take a look at a video here now of course this is a video of a very uh, majestic very uh, impressive looking lion in the wild look at his teeth under his, wow look at that you saw his teeth look at his fangs they're very sharp you have to be very careful 
of an animal like this because it could be dangerous, right? They eat other animals. That's what they do. So they could eat you. Be very careful, obviously, if you're around big animals like this, like lions and bears. And of course, if you're underwater, watch out for sharks as well. Sharks, you know, usually will avoid you, but you have to be careful what you have in your hands. Okay, let's move on. Okay, here let's move on to this exercise. Match each word with its definition. So we have the words here, wild, spiny, adaptation, one more time, adaptation, herbivore, one more time, herbivore, camouflage, camouflage, carnivore, carnivore. Okay, these are long words, so we need to practice the pronunciation a little bit. Let's look at the definitions. Number one, having sharp points like needles. Remember the picture of the fish we saw before? The fish had very uh, sharp points coming off of its body like needles. So we could say that that fish is what? We're looking for an adjective. We're looking, of course, for spiny. It has it has, it's a very spiny fish. It has a lot of sharp points on its body. You have to be careful. Don't touch it. Don't stick yourself on one of those spines. Number two, an animal that only eats plants. Remember, this is an important part of the lecture. We're talking about two kinds of animals. We can classify animals. One type of animal that only eats plants. It's a little hard to pronounce. Do you remember? It's an herbivore herbivore. A good way to remember that is an herb is a type of plant, right? So an herb, it's an herbivore. Of course, it doesn't just eat herbs, it eats all kinds of plants, right? But an herb is a type of plant. So that's a good way to remember. Herbivore is an animal that only eats plants. Next one, number three. A body part that helps a living thing meet its needs. So remember, we talked about this word a little bit. We talked about an animal that changes parts of its body in order to meet its needs. Like the giraffe will grow a very long neck. What do we call that? We call that an adaptation. How did that animal change in order to meet its needs in the wild? It's an adaptation. Okay. Number four an animal that only eats meat. We saw herbivore before is an animal that only eats plants, like an herb, but what is an animal that only eats meat? Well, of course, that would be a carnivore. Carnivore, okay? Number five, the color or shape of an animal that helps it to hide. Remember, when an animal wants to hide in the environment, like those white wolves in the snowy background, they can hide very well because they have camouflage, the color or shape that protects it. They can hide in their environment. That is camouflage. Number six, living or growing in a natural habitat. In a natural habitat. Not in your home, not in a zoo. They are living out in the wild. So if something lives out in the wild, they are living in the natural habitat. Nothing man-made, not in a home, not in a zoo, not in a cage. They are living in the wild. Okay, let's move on here. Okay, let's take a look at our chart here. Remember, we were just talking about camouflage. Camouflage is when an animal changes its color or shape, changes, it has an adaptation uh, to hide in its environment. So it ha uses color or shape to hide in where it lives. Now, some animals, you know, they do a little bit. Maybe they change the color of their fur from the winter to the summer. But some animals are really good at this. We can call them geniuses, right? They are the genius animals of camouflage. They're really, really good at this. Let's take a look at some examples. Insects, of course, are very good at camouflage. Insects are the masters at camouflage. Here we have a peppered moth caterpillar. A caterpillar, of course, you know, is a little, it's a worm-like insect that changes into a butterfly. But before it's a butterfly, it can't move around a lot. It has to be able to hide in its environment. Here we have a picture of a plant. We can see that the plant has a couple of branches. Here's one branch, 
Here's another branch. Here's a third branch. Oh, is that a third branch? No, that's not a third branch. That is the caterpillar. There's only two branches, and it looks like, it looks like there's a third branch, but no, that branch is actually the caterpillar. Wow, that caterpillar changed its color to look like the plant so that it looks like another branch. If we look at it, right, our first thought is there's only three branches. There's no caterpillar there. That's how good it is at hiding. In the next picture, same caterpillar or similar caterpillar, but the color of the plant has changed. Now the plant is green, so the caterpillar is green. And again, it looks like a branch of the plant. So the caterpillar is like a genius at being able to hide inside the plant. In the next picture, we have a flower mantis. Now, I'm sure you've probably seen a mantis before. They're very common in nature. These insects, of course, they have the, the triangular head with the two eyes, and they have the arms that, that are folded like this. That's why we call it uh, usually a praying mantis, because it looks like it's praying. But it has the arms that are folded like this, and it uses those arms to catch other insects. There is a mantis in this picture. Can you see it? Here we have uh, a flower here, very colorful flower, another flower here, and what's this? This is the mantis. You can see the body here, right? You can see the body here. You can also see the head over here, and this is a very big head, and you can see some arms or legs tucked in there. But it's very hard to see this mantis. It's a genius at hiding among these flowers. Down here we have the gum leaf grasshopper. Gum leaf because it looks like a gum leaf, the type of plant. Can you see the grasshopper? It's a little hard to see. The grasshopper's body, not only is it the same color as the plant it's hiding on, it even has the same pattern. It looks like a leaf because of the pattern on its body. It looks like a gum leaf. So this caterpillar, if it's in, in, on the ground, it just looks like an ordinary leaf. A bird will pass right by, won't even notice that grasshopper. And of course, that's what most insects are hiding from, birds. And that's why insects are such good uh, masters or geniuses at camouflage, because birds are everywhere, and birds are always looking. So insects have to be good at camouflage. We have one more example, and that is the hooded grasshopper. The hooded grasshopper. A hood, of course, is something that you put over your head, right, to protect you from the rain or cold. Can you see the hooded grasshopper here? We see leaves of the, uh, of the uh, uh, plant here. And oh, wait a minute, what is this? This looks like a leg. There's another leg here. Oh, and this looks like an eye, right? And look at that. That's the hood right there. That hood is so big and it's got... Uh, yellow on the edge, it looks like a leaf of the plant. So this hooded grasshopper is using camouflage to look like a leaf of the plant. So it's very difficult to see it right away when we look at this plant. So as I said before, insects are masters at camouflage. Let's take a look at a video of an insect. And as we can see, this insect here looks like a, another example of a mantis. Look at him. He's, he's kind of an interesting looking character. He looks like an alien almost. He's got the two eyes, two big eyes on either side. He's got something sticking out of his head. Look at the back. That's very interesting. Look at the pattern on the back of this insect. It kind of looks like the shape of the leaves that it's the, of the plant that it's on. So this insect blends in to the plant. It uses camouflage to hide itself. Again, it's hiding itself from birds who want to eat this insect. So it's using camouflage to do that. Okay, let's take a look at, the, uh, at this chart here. We have two pictures. Remember, we were classifying animals into two main groups by what they eat, okay? So here we have a picture of a lion. Remember, a lion has sharp, pointed teeth. Remember, I told you that those are fangs. Sharp, pointed teeth. What does this animal eat? This animal eats meat, so it is called a carnivore. This animal eats other animals. Over here in our second picture, we have a zebra, right? Look at its teeth. The teeth are 
are big and they're flat. They're flat teeth. They're good for eating plants, right? So this animal eats plants. Therefore, it is an herbivore. Herbivore. Okay. Now let's move on. We have a couple of more、uh, animals. What are they? It's got a big head, small body. No, it's just the way the picture is, right? Okay. This is a picture of a cow, right? Very funny-looking cow. Got horns, ears. And of course, we can see the teeth a little bit here. The teeth again are flat, right? They're very flat, but they're thick. They're strong teeth. They're flat. What does this animal eat? Of course, this animal eats plants. It is an herbivore. Herbivore. Finally, over here. Whoa! Look at this guy. He looks dangerous. He looks also fat. He's been eating a lot, right? What has he been eating? If we take a look at the Teeth here. There's lots and lots of teeth. Lots and lots of sharp, pointy teeth. So this animal eats other animals, and it looks like it just ate another animal. It's pretty fat. Okay. So what kind of animal is this? It's a carnivore. Okay. So again, these are our two types of animals that we can classify: carnivore or herbivore. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to our true/false questions. Number one: A carnivore. Is an animal that only eats plants. Is that true? Does a carnivore eat plants? Remember, a carnivore has sharp, pointy teeth. Sharp, pointy teeth are not good for eating plants. A carnivore is not an animal that only eats plants. We have to change that. We would have to change that to other animals. That's one way we could change it. A carnivore is an animal that only eats other animals, or other animals meat, right? Like chicken or beef. Okay.、Uh, a carnivore is an animal that only eats other animals or meat. Of course, we could change this. We could say an herbivore is an animal that only eats plants. That would also be correct. But we have to change it. So therefore, this sentence is false. Number two, an adaptation helps a non Non-living thing. Non means not living. So when we're talking about adaptations, right? We're talking about how animals change. Animals are living things, right? So this is false. If we got rid of non-living things, then it would be true. An adaptation helps a living thing. That's true. But we have to change the sentence, so it's false. Number three. Camouflage helps an animal hide. We saw a lot of examples of camouflage, especially when we were talking about insects. Insects are geniuses at hiding in their environment. They use camouflage. So, sure, camouflage helps an animal hide. That is true. Okay. Well, let's take a break here, and we'll move on to the reading in just a minute. Okay, welcome back. We're going over the reading section now, and in this reading section, what is their subject? We're talking about adaptations for survival, so that's in our first or topic sentence of the reading passage. Plants and animals have adaptations that help them survive. So adaptations help them survive. It also helps them meet their needs. So this paragraph is going to be about how animals change. Or change according to their environment, so that they can survive. An adaptation is a body part or behavior that helps a living thing meet its need. Whether that need is to get food, whether that need is to be able to sneak up on other animals, or to protect itself from other animals. There's many types of adaptations. For example, some animals have spikes, right? Spikes. All around their body, which are very spiny, so that they protect themselves from enemies. Okay, so this is one adaptation. They have spikes. They grow spikes. Spike is an adaptation. The spikes, they are very spiny, right? They're they are like needles. If you touch that, ow, it hurts, right? So you got to be careful. What do they do? They protect. They protect the animals. They protect themselves. From enemies. So if a shark comes along, the shark does not want to eat this puffer fish because that will hurt. Ow! It's like having a ball of needles. You don't want to eat that, right? So 
They will protect themselves by adapting their bodies, growing spikes, they are spiny, so that other animals don't want to eat them. Okay. Wild animals have adaptations. Of course, all animals have adaptations, but wild animals especially need their adaptations because they're living in the wild. Only they can take care of themselves. Carnivores, like tigers, have sharp teeth. Sharp teeth is an adaptation that carnivores use that helps them eat meat, right? Because if they have flat teeth, it's very difficult to, to tear the meat off of another animal with flat teeth. Sharp teeth, they can, they're able to do that. So unlike carnivores, not like carnivores, on the opposite side, herbivores have flat teeth for eating plants. So as we saw in the pictures before, herbivores have flat teeth to eat plants. So when we classify the animals, right, we have carnivores and herbivores. Carnivores have adaptations, sharp teeth. That's their adaptation so that they can meet their needs. Herbivores, their adaptation is flat teeth. Flat teeth allows them to eat plants. So two different types of animals two different styles of adaptations. That's how they've changed their bodies to meet their needs. Camouflage is another adaptation. Okay, so it's another adaptation. Camouflage is the color or shape, right? There's a couple of different ways. We saw how some insects especially will change their shape or use their shape to look like the branches of a tree or to look like the leaves, the, the shape of the leaves, or to look like a flower. So they'll also use shape of an animal that makes it blend in. I taught you this word before. Blend in with its environment. So if something blends in with the environment, it is using camouflage. Camouflage is an adaptation. A chameleon. A chameleon is a type of lizard, right? A chameleon's really amazing. It can change the color of its body so that it cannot be seen easily. And it can change its body color in, in an instant, right? As it moves, it can change the color of its body. Let's take a look at a video. This is a chameleon. It looks like a very scary looking uh, lizard, right? Very interesting looking lizard. He's got a big mouth here. Right now he's green because he's in a tree that has green leaves, okay? Now this is a chameleon. You can almost see he's changing from green to yellow over here, right? Look at how the color of his skin or his body changes. And look at the different colors here. Here we have dark green. Here we have more of a yellowish green. And he can change these colors. And look at that, there's these horns on the, on the front of the lizard. Very interesting looking uh, critter, very interesting looking uh, creature. But this lizard can actually change the color of its skin as it moves around. He didn't move that much, but if he moved around and moved to a different environment, he can change the color of his skin to match his surroundings. And he's using camouflage, obviously, to do that. Okay, let's look at our chart here. Our chart is looking at the reading skill, compare and contrast. So we're comparing things. How are they the same? Contrast, how are they different? And our topic, of course, is adaptation. We're talking about how adaptation is alike, how adaptation is different. Our words down here, we need to fill in these blanks with these words. We have a lot of blanks. Our words are spiny, survive, herbivores, herbivores, carnivores, carnivores, shape and needs. So let's take a look at this chart. Adaptation. How is adaptation, how is adaptation alike for all animals? Well, adaptation helps living things to beep and meet their beep. So it helps living things to what? To do what down here? Probably survive. Survive is our correct answer. Survive is a verb. They need to survive. They need to continue living. Adaptations help animals to continue living, to survive and meet there. You meet what? What do you meet? You meet one's needs. So meet their needs. It helps animals meet their needs. 
Okay, how are adaptation different? How is adaptation different? Different animals use adaptation in different ways. Some living things have beep spikes. What kind of spikes? We're looking for an adjective, right? So we're looking for a word like spiny. Some living things have spiny spikes on their body, right? Spiny, if you touch them, it's like you're touching a needle. Ow, be careful, right? Spiny spikes. Here, some animals have special color or beep that help them hide. Remember, when we talked about camouflage, we talked about color, and we also talked about another way that animals use camouflage, color and shape, right? Color and shape that help them to hide in nature. So it's not just color, it's also the shape of their bodies. For example, the caterpillars, their shape looks like a twig or a branch of the plant that they are on. Now here we have a blank, have sharp teeth. So we're looking for some kind of animal that has sharp teeth. What kind of animal has sharp teeth? If you chose carnivores, you would be correct. Remember, carnivores, their adaptation is sharp teeth so that they can eat other animals. Now another type of animal has flat teeth. They have flat teeth so that they can eat plants. What kind of animal eats only plants? That would be herbivores, herbivores. So these are different animals, different types of animals, different types of adaptation. Some animals have spike, spiny spikes. Not all animals, right? But some. Some animals have color or shape to hide themselves. Not all animals, but some. That's how they're different. And of course, the big difference between the two types of animals, some animals eat other animals, some animals only eat plants. So that's another big difference. That's how they are different. Okay, let's go over the reading comprehension questions here. Here we have the first question. A chameleon can change what to help it hide? What can it change to help it hide? We have here shape, color, or spikes. Remember, the chameleon was that strange looking lizard we saw in the video. It had horns on its head. Those horns, by the way, you could say are like spikes. Can it change its horns or its spikes? No, those horns stay the same, so C's not right. Can it change its shape? Can a chameleon change the shape of its body? No, the chameleon can't change the shape of its body, but what the chameleon can do is change its color. Remember we saw part of it was green, part of it was yellow. So the chameleon can change the color of its skin to hide depending on where it is. Okay, so let's move on to number two. Herbivores, herbivores, remember, animals that eat plants. They have beep for eating plants, right? What do they have? Remember, all the answers show teeth, 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 teeth. So we're looking for what type of teeth are they? Do they have flat teeth, spiny teeth, or sharp teeth? By the way, it's interesting to note that spiny and sharp mean the same thing. Spiny and sharp, right? The, the fish that we saw has many uh, spikes on it. They're very spiny. They're very sharp. If you touch them, ow! It's like touching a needle. So spiny and sharp are really synonymous. They are the same meaning. Do herbivores have sharp or spiny teeth? No, they don't. What they have are flat teeth. They have flat teeth. Flat is the opposite of sharp or spiny. So herbivores have flat teeth for eating plants. Okay, moving on to number three. How can an adaptation help an animal, right? We talked about how adaptations help animals. So we have three choices here. A, by helping it eat and live. B, by changing its environment. C, by protecting it from camouflage. Only one of these answers really makes sense. A, by helping it eat and live. So, to meet its needs, right? Adaptations help animals meet their needs. What does an animal need? It needs to eat and it needs to live, right? The other choice is changing its environment. Can an animal change its environment? No, the environment 
is not a choice, right? The, the animal has to live in the environment and an adaptation doesn't help the animal change that environment, it has to live in that environment. C, by protecting it from camouflage, your, the animals are not afraid of camouflage, right? Camouflage helps animals protect them from other animals. They're not protected from camouflage, that's silly. The only one choice that makes sense is A. Moving on to number four. Herbivores do not eat meat, right? They only eat plants, right? And what's the rest of the sentence? So, herbivores do not eat meat and A, carnivores only eat tigers and rabbits. That sounds a little strange. Eat tigers? Tig carnivores eat tigers? No, tigers are at the top of the food chain. Nothing eats tigers, so A is not correct. What about B? And chameleons can change a plant's color. So chameleons can change the color of the plants? No, chameleons change their own color to blend in with the plants. So B is not correct. C must be your answer. Herbivores do not eat meat and carnivores do not eat plants. Sounds right, right? Now we're using the negative, right? Herbivores eat plants. They do not, they do not, not eat meat. And carnivores do not eat plants. It's the other way around. Herbivores eat plants, carnivores eat meat. So we can also use negative to show this difference between the two animals. Okay, let's move on to our chart here. Remember, we're classifying animals into two main groups by what do they eat. Over here we have a picture of a horse. Uh, animals like horses have flat teeth because they only eat plants. Examples, horse, squirrel, and rabbit. What classification is this animal? What classification do we put it in? This animal is an herbivore. These animals are herbivores. Down here we have a picture of a lion. Lions and other animals like this have sharp pointed teeth, right? They have sharp teeth. They eat other animals. Examples, lion, tiger, shark. These animals are at the top of the food chain. What do we call these animals? We call them carnivores. So if you chose that, that is correct. Okay, well that wraps up this lesson. Uh, it's very interesting to look at animals, how they have changed to meet their needs. We call those adaptations. And that's what we have learned in this lesson. Hope you've learned a lot. We'll see you next time. Take care.